Georgia Virtue presents the Let Me Tell You Why You're Wrong podcast. Thank you for downloading episode 315. This week, we have the mess in the Middle East, the Trump doo-doo show, facts are racist, the Kennedy clan, the House majority gets smaller, stupidity runs in families, rural savannah, and quote-unquote tax cuts. I'm Dave Roberts. With me is my part of this endeavor, Representative Emeritus, Ken Pullen. I'm not sure taxes are ever being cut. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how they keep racking. They dislocate their shoulders, patting themselves on the back, and somehow my state taxes go up. <laughs> I know. And we sort of, we sort of, we're sort of having this debate locally down here where I live around, do we want more business or less business? And I, from time to time, people say, you got to have more business so your property taxes go down. I've never seen property taxes go down because another business moves into town. I think that is a total made up statement. Hiram made a deal with the with the residents a long time ago. They said if we approve liquor by the drink, uh, we will never impose uh, uh, taxes on homeowners. And up until now, they haven't. Wow. No now property have, tax or just city taxes? No, no, no city, city tax. taxes. Okay, I got you. No, and it, does, it doesn't exempt it from, from, the, uh, from the county. Yep. <clears throat> I did see that Dickie Betts died. Uh, uh, I know. Yeah, the Almond Brothers, famous making band, a little south of me, a little south of you also. I didn't oh, realize yeah. this, but they were formed in 1969 in Jacksonville, Florida, and they moved to Macon soon after. Yeah, they're fine. I mean, you know, everybody loves their music. They could go on playing for 10, 15 minutes the same song. It was, they were quite the band. Oh, he was a, he was a hell of a guitarist. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he's, if, if you listen to any of the Allman Brothers stuff and, and you hear that that singing guitar, that's Dickie Betts. Yeah, he's amazing. Uh, you know, they, the Allman Brothers band is huge. They had, had two drummers, a uh, rhythm guitar, a, sl- a slide guitar, lead guitar, uh a piano or, or organ. I mean, it's they 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 put on a on a heck of a show, and and Dickie always looked like he was having fun. I mean, he's always he was always smiling on stage and looked like he's having the time of his life. No, why can't like, how can you not be having fun playing music all the time? I mean, the Stones are still doing it. Yeah, I mean, they they just are out there having fun. Did you see who sponsored their their latest tour? Uh uh-uh. AARP. <laughs> That's that not a, it's not a joke either. <laughs> That's so too funny. I, he was he was eighty. He had cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Been battling cancer a, for a while. Yep. Yeah. As as they always say, died surrounded by friends and family. You know, ca- cancer is cancer is a thief. It, yeah. it really is. Eighty is a good good age to live to. I know the life expectancy now. It feels like I think it's around eighty six for most people, but. I mean, if you make it to eighty and you've been a been a famous band for a long time, you've lived a you've lived a good life. I think he lived he probably lived a pretty hard life when he was young. I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, you know, we we talk about that with with a, with a lot of the uh, hard rockers that that passed. Like, man, he uh, he he outlived a lot. Even Tom Petty, who uh, I love, Tom Petty. Yep. Uh, but he he lived a hard life, a good life, but a hard life, buddy. Yep. No, no doubt. Uh, I, I have the theory that he dated Stevie Nicks. That, that <laughs> there, it was more more than just an on stage thing. But that's that's my theory. It's not necessarily anything in fact, but they were two young, very rich, uh, successful, and good looking people. Right. Her more than him. But what is this other note you have here? Have you ever used the before in a certain year in Google? So. Okay, let me tell you where this came about. I saw this today. So if you go to Google now and say, can a man menstruate? Google comes back and says, yes, some men can menstruate, including transgender men, non-binary people, and agender people. I don't know what an agender is. It said menstruation doesn't change anything about your gender, and it's just a thing that some bodies do. However, some men who menstruate experience dysphoria or discomfort with their assigned biological sex. If you go into Google and put before colon 2016 and search on the same thing. Let me read what it says. So then it says, uh, 
it gives a complete different definition of what Google is. So it, I saw this out there today. It's like, wow, that you can put a particular year into Google into the search and you can look for a particular year. And what it's doing, Elon Musk actually highlighted this on Twitter today, uh, where it's different definitions depending upon the different years. And it's just like, <laughs> so that's what I was getting you to do is, yeah, if you have any free time, go out there, you can put before t- 2020, 2022. It doesn't matter what year you put. It's going to go back in time and actually pull up the articles from that period of time and get the results from that, that uh, time period. Nice. Yeah, thought that was interesting. Learned something new today. They'll I fix think, that. I think I'm going to start doing that on all searches. Uh, try to find some actual facts. Yeah, because if you do it on, before 2016, it's like, you know, men do not menstruate. Only women menstruate. But then, you know, eight years later, it's like, yeah, anybody can menstruate. Men included. No. There's actually, <laughs> there's actually a South Park about that. A I couple know. of them about it. <clears throat> One was uh, Mr. Garrison decides to become Mrs. Garrison. Right. And uh, he's like, well, it hasn't been this time, that time of the month yet. And like, he goes, oh, my God, I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I've seen that. <laughs> so we have the war in the Middle East. Yeah, I was wondering how far this was going to go. So, you know, the background of this is Israel bombed and killed an Iranian general. What was it, two, three weeks ago? Uh, this was a high-ranking general. He's meeting with Hezbollah to the north. They killed him, and Iran was threatening to strike Israel back. And <clears throat> we know earlier this week that uh, Iran sent tons of drones and you know some rockets and uh, uh, you know Israel along with the United States and Great Britain intercepted almost every one of them. They had like a ninety nine percent acceptance rate. After that, Biden and Kamala Harris basically said, "Okay, Israel, you know you got yours. Iran attacked back. You don't need to do anything else." And uh, early last Friday morning, uh, Israel launched another retaliatory strike against Iran where they bombed. Uh, you know, I forget what it was. It was like a, a place in Iran that had launched some of these bombs uh, at them. So who knows what's going to happen here, but it's getting pretty heated over. If it could get any hotter in the Middle East, it feels like the tensions continue to rise. Well, Iran is 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 saying there was no damage. It was pointless. So they are preparing themselves to de-escalate. Yep. Yeah, I Iran, think they want to de- can- yeah, I think they want to de-escalate at this point. Iran can't survive a shooting war. No, no. <clears throat> and people in the States tend to lump everybody in the Middle East together. Iran- Iranians are Persians. They're not Arab. Yep. They don't like each other. Yes, they, they worship the same religion, but they do not like each other. Yep. And that's where you see Jordan shooting down drones and, and rockets that are going over their, their sovereign airspace. Mm-hmm. And the King of Jordan said, "You're not going to you're not going to fly stuff over over our airspace." Yep. And, and typically, when you do that, you get permission. Now, <laughs> I don't think these were manned attacks. No, so I don't I think they were drones or, or what it was. But uh, I don't see any of the Arab nations getting upset at Israel striking Iran. No, I don't think they are. Uh, the Crown Prince of Iran in in exile w- was on TV. And, you know, he obviously wants his, his country back. Yeah. The, the Iranians have a, a large army, but everything they have is dated. Yes. Like the Air Force is, sh- is using F-14s, <laughs> Tomcats, uh, that date back to the days of the Shahs back in the 70s. Yeah, it just seems like to me, I know it's, it's, this is a religious thing, but it seems like Iran could just, I mean, the people there are obviously oppressed. I mean, the country could just become so much better if they opened it up. Uh, but they they just refused to. It was the ju- it was the jewel of of, of the I know. It, it used exactly. To be a, a I've resort. seen photos from Iran too. It's amazing what the country looks like. Yeah, in the sixties, you know, you see see women walk around in bikinis. It, it was it was a completely secular society. Yep. Yes, yes, there were Muslims, and yes, there were people that wear her jobs or whatever. But there 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 were no hard fast. Uh, Sharia laws. I mean, if you saw one in a bikini, you didn't immediately pull out a stick and start beating her. Right. Yeah, it was it was a fairly progressive uh, society, and Americans would would would, would fly you know, fly into Iran and and go 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 and party. 
Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, and that's all they've got to do now is just open it back up. I mean, it would take years to to open back up, but I just don't understand what. Yeah, it's well, that's uh, the same thing about Venezuela. If they would if they would topple their government, they have one of the most beautiful countries on earth. Yep, they they have uh, beach towns, they have uh, mountains, they have beautiful waterfalls. I mean, it would be a it'd be a wonderful place to visit. Yep. I just don't want to get thrown into a gulag because I want to go fishing. <laughs> that just, you know, back in the 90s, I went to, to Aruba and most of their fruits and vegetables came from Venezuela because they're so close. Yeah. And, and now, obviously, it's not. They're, you know, they're not producing enough food to feed their people. Yeah, and I think we put so, more sanctions on Venezuela last week, more oil sanctions. So it's, uh, it's not getting any better. Yeah. So I, you know, I the the Venezuelans that come here, I I really think are political refugees. Yeah, uh, the Guatemalans that come here are not political refugees. Right. I, I don't have anything against Guatemala. In fact, I, the, there's a fishing lodge down there called Casa Viejo. I, I want to go to. I know every, everything revolves around me and saltwater fishing. It sounds like it. <laughs> but I, I like Biden. Don't. Yeah. Don't. Shut up, Joe. Shut yeah, up. Yeah, hey, hey, look, this dude, I mean, I didn't think he'd go any further downhill, but after watching some of the some of his actions this week, he's getting worse at, on, at the month now, to the point that if he makes November, it'll be an absolute miracle. Hey, they will prop him up with duct tape and bailing wire. I guess. To get him, to get him through, and, and then and then to go, oh, well, the president's had a... Had a yeah, he's got to um, step down. Had a medical down. emergency. He's going to step down, and and old Mella oh, will be God. in charge. Yeah, God help us if she is. Yeah, Joe has has dementia. Camilla's just stupid. Yeah, she's dumb as a rock. So we have speaking of dumb things, the Trump jury. Yeah, this is the jury in a criminal hush money trial. So the the uh, trial started last Monday, so a week before this uh, episode releases. So they finally picked their jury. It took them all week. It's made up of seven men and five women who live in different parts of Manhattan. Uh, I thought it was pretty interesting looking at, I don't know if you read some of the backgrounds on this ju- on the jury, but uh, you know, it's like they asked all the jurors, basically, where do you get your news? So like juror number one's a man. He works in sales, uh, some college education. He's married with no children, says he gets his news from a range of outlets such as the New York Times, Daily Mail, Fox News, and MSNBC. Uh, so they, they basically documented everyone. You know, that was what they asked. And they asked every one of them if they had opinions on Trump or strong opinions on Trump. Like juror number five is a young woman who said that she has friends with strong opinions on Trump, but she was not a political person and avoided the news. Um yeah, I don't know. You know, juror number eight is retired wealth manager who is married with children. Asked if he has strong opinions about Trump. He paused for a minute before answering yes. And then when a judge followed up and asked if he could be fair and impartial, he said he could. I don't know how any of these people are fair and impartial. I, who doesn't have a strong feeling about Trump at this point and can make a, you know, a fair and balanced decision? I, I just don't know how any of them do. No, 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 no. First of all, the person says, oh, I don't really follow the news. Well, that may be true. That may be true you don't follow the news, but you know who who the hell Donald Trump is. Yes, and, and the, in the back of their mind, they've got to be thinking that if they let this guy off and, and find President Trump innocent, then everybody at that point is going to know who they are and it's going to come after him. Uh, so in, their, in the back of their mind, they've got to be thinking, like, what's the safest thing for me to do as a juror? And, you know, when you start thinking that way, there's no way justice can prevail. And a call back from last week that you start talking about the OJ trial. Oh, where yeah. they were worried about the repercussions of of finding OJ not guilty. Yes, right. Or, or finding him guilty. Yeah, yeah. That the this, this city would burn again. Yes, exactly. So, and that was in the back of their minds. At least a few of them. Oh, and all it, Cause, takes, cause, is, all it takes is a few, right? Well, it takes one to hang a jury. Yep. But... <clears throat> But they they acquitted OJ, and it was uh, this is going to be this is going to be the same thing the other way, is that they're because they're going to have if they find him not guilty they're going to have to go home, and people are going to know well where have you been for two weeks? Oh yeah, everybody all their friends are going to know they were on a jury, and then how's I, that going to play out? 
I just don't believe that anybody says, well, I don't really follow politics. Well, that's a person that watched, watched reality TV. And you can't tell me they didn't watch The Apprentice. <laughs> I know. I, I don't. Yeah. The, who doesn't follow politics in a day's world? I mean, even if you try not to, they're still right there in your face and all everywhere you turn. And they say, well, my friends are, are really involved. That means your friends are talking to you about it. That's how you know. Oh, 100%. You know, we didn't we didn't absorb ourselves in politics w- when I was younger. It just it just wasn't a thing. You, uh, if you wanted to argue with your neighbor, be over football. Yeah, we never talked about it growing up. I, I mean, I, I really didn't start getting you know paying attention. I was probably low thirties, mid thirties. I just never Alex, paid any attention. I was young and into it. I mean, I was a little Alex P. Keaton. That's why I've always been amazed at these young kids that are working for political campaigns, or or even people that run for office when they're twenty one, twenty two years old. Um, I always think, how do they get involved at such an early age and have that passion to go out and run for office? I mean, I, I, I think it's really cool that the young people do that. I just, I, at that age, I wasn't worried about politics and running for office. Oh, I was. I, I uh, uh, was a member of the Republican Party, uh, a, a, a true member, uh, as soon as I turned 18. Yeah, and my uh, son, my son's that way. I mean, Luke's what nineteen. He's uh, started a YAF chapter. He's uh, he's in North Carolina at college, and he's doing this uh, North Carolina State Legislature event this weekend, where they're trying to, you know, they put together legislation and try to get it passed from a college perspective. Yeah, so he's very involved. I just never was. Well, the only issue that I have, and this this is because I'm an old man, is when these kids are twenty two years old, want to want to run for you know, elected office, you don't have the life experience at 22. You know, you're typically right out of college and you just don't, you just don't have the life experience yet. So Uh, what, uh, let me ask, let me pose that a different way. These people in DC that have run up a $35 trillion budget are at the state level that vote for mega budgets every time and, and uh, restrict rights and access and liberty and freedom. Is is their life experiences? I mean, how did they get to that point? Right? <laughs> I mean, that that <laughs> comes from that comes from being in the in that office. Is I've I've said it before. You, Washington is a river, and you go in as a jagged rock, and you say, "I'm going to change the river." Yeah, the rock doesn't change the river; the river changes the rock. And after a while, that that jagged rock. Is smoothed over and it's just rolling with the flow like the rest of the pebbles. And that's what happens is you, is you get in these offices and you start getting the perks. Oh, that's the perks, 100%. And, it does it. And in Washington, is is very much about the cocktail party. If you're not getting along with the right people, you're not getting in, invited to the right cocktail parties. Yeah, I think you see it. I mean, th- I think if you take the different levels of government, you see that at D.C. It's all about fitting in so you get invited to all the parties and you get all the political donations, which in turn keep you in office. At the state level, it's pretty much the same, right? You still get all the perks. The political donations come from lobbyists and big business, and that's what keeps you in office. Now, local level is a little different. I think what you see at the local level a lot of times is people are running for office that, that to purely benefit themselves, or their financial pocketbooks. And I, I say that because county commission, uh, IDA boards, IDA boards are made up of bankers. Well, who benefits when an industrial development authority brings a new business in a town? The bankers or the construction people that are doing construction or the people that have, you know, local businesses that provide those type of services. So I think you see that at the local level. It's more of like, do you run for office because it's going to benefit you personally? And I'm totally against that, but I think that's what you see sometimes. You see some ideologues. There's that, not many. That, there's not many locally. I, I, I get you, but there's not many. I, less than 5%. And there's a, I think there's a lot of pressure that goes on in, in executive sessions and stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah if, if you have somebody who's, who's a little weaker spined, they they get pushed by the rest of the commissioners of, uh, of to vote the way they want to want to vote, and I truly believe every vote on the on the county level is choreographed. They, <laughs> I they think know. most are probably. Yeah. So look, or I have to vote no on this, but, but and explain why, and say I I, I, uh, I have to vote no on this. But you've got you've got four other yes votes, so it's not going to hurt anything. So go out and do your theater, vote no, and. 
and it's it's all good. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. Everybody says, says the, gov- the government that's closest to you. No, it's dirty as hell. Yep. City, uh, we had a city council shut down a business for six months and about put them completely out of business until going to court and and, and uh, Andrew Rodriguez, the guy who owns Dallas Markets, won in court. So they had to let him open back up. Yep. But the fact is, he was competing with with the county, or with with the city. I'm sorry, with the city of Dallas. He was competing with them because they they would run events, and his events would 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 blow. There was no parking. They had to, they had to buy an additional piece of property and, and buy a shuttle van to sh- to shuttle people to and from the Dallas markets because the parking lot was so full. And the, and the city really wanted that property, so they they about ran him out of business. Yep. So, don't say illegal alien in class, apparently. I know. So, last week, this uh, high school student named Christian McGee was suspended from Central Davidson High School in Lexington, North Carolina, for three days last week after he used the term illegal alien in an English class assignment. Uh, This was first reported by the libs of TikTok. So, uh, you probably follow the libs of TikTok or seen them on Twitter. Uh, But basically, there was this, you know, the... English teacher, they were having this uh, discussion in class about, and she said, you know, come up with a word, come up with like a phrase with alien in it. And he said, illegal alien. And one of the other classmates took offense to that and wanted to fight the kid. You no, know, he, he yeah. asked a question. Yeah, he Do asked you a mean question. Space, space alien or, or like illegal, illegal alien. alien? Yep. And somebody else, you know, another kid in the class got mad. They sent, this kid to the office and they suspended him for three days for saying illegal alien. <laughs> it's truly amazing. Facts uh, are now racist. Yeah. And it, look, if it, somebody, if somebody else wants to fight you because of something that you said, the illegal alien word, the other kid should have been suspended. Or handle it outside of school, square off, go for it. <laughs> or just say, everybody's got freedom of speech and, and, it, and talk about the words. I mean, why would this get somebody suspended for three days? And what's even worse, this kid's like uh, trying to get scholarships. And, uh, you know, this is going down his permanent record now. And that's what his parents were so They were upset about both. They got suspended. And then he said, this is going to be in his record. So college is going to be able to see this. And it's going to hurt him from getting accepted. When did illegal alien be- become offensive? I don't know. I don't even know what I, I mean. For, what is the what is the right term for the left now? I think it's migrants or side. I don't even know what. Yeah. I don't even know what they're Und, calling them undocumented, now. undocumented migrants or whatever. Yeah, undocumented migrants. Phil Collins has a song uh, that line goes. It's no fun being an illegal alien. Yep. And Rush Limbaugh actually uh, back in the nineties did a did a spoof of it. It's no fun being an illegal uh, alien or alien. I'm talking about uh, alien Gonzalez. Yep. Uh. But yeah, it's it's a it's a it's an old song, and it still still plays still there on Apple Music. I mean, it's it's fine. It's it's actually not a bad song, and he's he's actually coming. From, well, they'll the probably take it. They'll probably take it down now after you mention it, Dave. Yeah, yeah, but the song is actually written from the point uh, point of view of uh, the illegal aliens and and how hard it is to 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 to. It's it's, it's they said it's no fun being a legal alien. <laughs> so it was it's actually written in a sympathetic way towards towards illegal aliens, but. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not apologetic. First of all, the the the, the kid that got offended is a little b. The yes. teacher that sent him to the office is a little b. Yeah, she should have handled it without ever it. going to the office. There's no reason to send anybody to the office. Well, she could say, "Well, we don't really use that term anymore." But yes, yeah, someone may have a resident alien card, and that's what a green card is. Yep. And, and handle it like that, and 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 educate them. And, or not, and from her standpoint, educate him. We say, look, you know, we're not, we're not going to use that term in, in this class. But I get what you're saying. Yes, we, you you could use it as space aliens or people that are from countries that are not originally from the United States are uh, or haven't been naturalized are 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 alien residents. Yep, I know. So I I don't I don't get this is North Carolina, man. This is not. This is not yeah, California. North Carolina is very, I mean, you know, North Carolina, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of very liberal people in North Carolina now. Yeah. Speaking of liberal people, the Kennedy family endorses Biden. I mean, is this supposed to hurt JFK? 
Uh, or Robert F. K. Robert K. Yeah, RFK. I, I mean, yeah, like who who takes an endorsement from these clowns? In, you know, like who, who cares who the Kennedy family endorses? I really don't know. Uh, but yeah, the Robert Kennedy families endorsed Joe Biden last week and would not endorse uh, Robert F. Kennedy's independent bid for president. Uh, this is the silliest thing ever. In, like, including, who, including his 10 siblings. Inclu- yeah, including his 10 siblings. Where, where did RFK find time to be attorney general? I mean, good Lord. I mean, he, he died <laughs> relatively young. He did and had 10. He had a lot of kids. Had 11 kids. Yes. Oh, do you know who uh, Robert Kennedy Jr.'s wife is? Uh Uh-uh. Cheryl Hines, the actress. Oh, okay. I didn't know if that was like the Hines ketchup or what. No, no. Cheryl Hines is is actress from Curb Your Enthusiasm. She's been a lot of stuff. Huh. Yeah, I'm just, you know, the Kennedys. I I mean, who cares who the Kennedys endorsed? And then they try to talk about an endorsement, how Robert Kennedy didn't represent their values and – I'm like, what values exactly does the Kennedy family have? I mean, Ted, that's, uh, do we really want to talk about him? Oh, Teddy? Yeah, so, mate. Oh, Mr. I Can Drive, no problem? Yeah, so heck with who the Kennedys endorse. I, I, mean, I don't, I don't a, care. This don't, is the silliest thing ever. I don't care about the Kennedys. I don't care about the Bushes. Uh, now, what's interesting is this. Yeah, endorsements. They matter a little bit, but not like this doesn't matter, right? This is not gonna swing one vote, them endorsing Biden. No, if 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 you were if you were in love with the Kennedys, you're, you 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 were already voting Biden. It's not it's not like Exactly. Uh you, you're not like you're in the Trump camp and like, okay, all right, yeah, we're gonna get the orange man back in office, get our taxes down. Oh, the Kennedys endorse endorse the, the senile old man? Oh, you know what? Let's dump the orange man and go, and go with the senile man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I, it, I don't think it adds anything to them. I don't either. The House majority is down to one as of last Friday. Isn't that crazy? So, Representative Mike Gallagher out of Wisconsin, he was the chair of the China Select Committee, said last week he'll resign on April nineteenth, uh, which is a couple days in the past. So, the House majority, uh, House Republican majority, is down to one vote at this point. Isn't that nuts? He said he's resigning effective immediately. He's still going to represent his uh, his district until the end of the year, but he is not going to be in D.C. any longer. Yeah, the Speaker of the House is having a hard time. His majority's down to one. I what, don't know if what, you saw, but Marjorie Taylor Greene, yeah, I mean, she's got like three people now that signed on the motion to vacate the chair. Plus, he's almost done at this point. It's just what, total disarray. First of all, what is this guy's problem? What is Mike Gallagher's problem? Ride it out. Yeah, he's a young guy. He was 40 years old. Uh, He was one of these, I hate this word, seen as a rising star in the GOP. But uh, yeah, he was a young guy. He's taking a job in a private sector. So uh, yeah, I was reading his thing. He said, I just, he said, after the conversation with my family, I've made a decision to resign my position. Uh, And the House Representatives for for Wisconsin's 8th Congressional District, effective April 19th. You know, they're all saying it's just, I mean, the people that are resigning are saying it's just total chaos up there. Look, it's a lack of leadership in a day. You see this in private business. If you have a bad leader, people start leaving and they find other stuff to do. And it's it's the same thing in D.C. There's no leadership up there. So even these representatives are going, yeah, it's a disaster. We got poor leadership. We're getting out of here. All right. The lesson I learned when I was very, very young. I played soccer for one season. Hated it. Absolutely hated it. But I finished the season. And my parents told me, you don't have to, you don't have to sign up for it again. But you made a commitment to a team and you are going and you're going to see it through. I view this much the same way. He's not sick. This isn't a, a situation where he got diagnosed with cancer and he didn't he's get appointed to another job like some people do. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is I, it's just him saying, "I'm done." Right? Half. I mean, you you spend yeah. millions of dollars getting that position, millions of other people's dollars to yeah, get that people, position. People people depend on and you. It is uh, to to leave. This is the worst. Seven way. and a half months. This is the early. worst way to do it. Yep, this is totally the worst way to do it. It's, it's disrespectful to his voters. It's disrespectful it to his donors. It's disrespectful to, to the people of the United States. It, it's seven months. 
sit there, do your time, resign from the committee if you want to. I know. Set, step down from leadership in the, in the committee and go and sit in your office. And when and when the House is in session, go sit in your chair, vote yes, vote no, then go back to your office. Just ride it out. Yeah, this is the worst way to do it. It really is. And look, had he resigned in January, they could have had a special election for him. Yeah, I don't know seat. what the I don't know what the deal is now. Well, uh, it's it's it, I, I guess <laughs> it's going to be a jungle primary in November. It, it I imagine it's too late for to to get together a jungle primary for for the. Uh, oh, I think it depends the, on what primaries. Yeah, it depends on what Wisconsin laws are. I don't know. I think every state does is slightly different, but yeah, I don't know what'll happen now. But good grief! I mean, just stepping down right in the middle of a term is is uh, chicken. S H. It is. It is. You know? It's if. You made a promise to the voters. You did. You made a promise. And you said, I'm signing up for two years. You don't have to run for re-election. But you said, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you two years. And it's not like a Senate. He didn't, he's not, he's not, he didn't sign up for six. Yep. Two years. And you're almost done with it. You've done one and about a third of it. Right at the other, the, the, the other, the other two thirds of the year and just Roll with it, man. Yep. Just, just be a be an adult. Be a man. Put your head down and do your damn job. Yep. All right. More idiocy. <laughs> Ilhan, Ilhan Omar's daughter was arrested. Yeah, I can't even say her name. It's Isra Hersey, I guess. She is a she describes herself as a communist or socialist communist. On Twitter, isn't that amazing? So we've got a sitting House representative, and their daughter is a socialist communist. But uh, she was one of the more. She was what she was among more than 100 protesters arrested last Thursday on Columbia University's campus in New York, as police were called in to break up those who pitched tents to stage a pro-Palestinian protest. So we've got a sitting congressman's daughter protesting the war in Israel. Do they just, first of all, they don't know what they're protesting. They they're, they're, they're being indoctrinated. I yeah. was watching a, a Columbia student uh, on a, one of the news programs, and she said she doesn't want to go to graduation anymore. She says, I recognize these people. I, have, I take classes with these people. Yep. And they're calling for, for genocide, for my genocide. Yeah. And she said there, there's a, a professor that teaches uh, a, a, an Israeli course about the about the conflict between the Israelis and Palestinians it does a course on it and it is all pro-Palestinian about, uh, talking about the occupation from the river to the sea all that stuff yep and these kids are being indoctrinated yeah hey, look half half these pro quote unquote protesters are professionals mm-hmm. they get busted in they're the same people that were doing BLM stuff they get they get busted in they they get paid and this is what they do for a living is go from cause to cause to cause to cause so you know, BLM, they're wearing shirts with, with, with a fist on it or a can't breathe shirts or, or whatever, wherever, or the worst was, I can't remember whose father it was, it said gone too soon. And it was T O instead of T O O. So the, the meme was, I don't know where soon is, but that's where he's gone. Yeah. And I don't know if you saw this, that was Ilhan Omar's daughter, but there were quite a few Google employees that protested last week too. They staged sit in protest in Google offices in Silicon Valley, New York, and Seattle. And thank Google fired those people. So they fired uh, 28 employees who were part of this no tech for apartheid group. So good for Google. I mean, can you imagine going to your, can you imagine having a job at Google, which you're probably making, you're making, you know, 100,000 easy, 100,000 plus because you're working in one of these big cities. And you're so mad about the war over in Israel that you protest in your employee's office. And they should have been fired. I mean, I would hope my boss would fire me if I did something this stupid. Oh, can you imagine being so mad to go set yourself on fire like the guy yeah. did Friday afternoon or Friday that morning? Happened, and, yeah, it happened Friday out, morning outside of the Trump outside of the Trump trial. And I mean, I, yeah, these I don't people get are just it. stupid. That guy yeah. was crazy. Uh, yeah, that but, guy was crazy. If you don't know what we're talking about, a guy set himself on fire last week, and the video is hard to watch. But he literally sets himself on fire and he stands up while he is fully engulfed in flames. For about twenty seconds before he actually falls over, 
But I mean, and, how, how bad? I mean, what kind of state I, does your mind have to be into to pour gas on yourself and set yourself on fire? And as of recording, he was in critical condition. I, I have no clue how he lived. I, I don't know how he lived that. Richard, Richard, Richard Pryor lived for another thirty years. Yeah, this is terrible, though. Yeah, uh, and that guy has has a master's degree, uh, a master's from Duke. I mean, he's he's smart, but he's off. He was off his rocker for sure. <laughs> like like he, like he needed some. He needed help. Like somebody in his life should have said, "Let's let's get you in to talk to somebody," because because that dude that dude needed inpatient care. Right. But but with with these protesters, they they don't care about the Palestinians. They don't care about the Israelis. This is just the the cause du jour. Jeez. And next week it'll be something else. It will be. Yep, totally. I, I just don't get it. This is a good time to remind you, these are our opinions and not those of anyone not on the show or any respective company for which we may work, own, or otherwise associate ourselves with on a regular or irregular basis. Also, you can find other episodes and relevant stories over the georgiavirtue.com. So, Kenny, I didn't realize that Savannah was rural. I didn't either. I saw this again on Jessica's Georgia Virtue this week, but... Governor Kemp's given uh, the city of Savannah a two and a half million dollar rural workforce housing money grant. I, I, so, <laughs> uh, so Kemp's press release Wednesday said the money is for a development project to provide 50 homes. Uh, the city of Savannah will receive two point five million to construct necessary sewer infrastructure improvements to complete the 66 acre legacy development that will support 30 new single family homes and 20 townhouses. Uh, built by this developer, so this is where this is this is really what it's about, right? P three JVG. I don't know what that stands for. Uh, yeah, but this is rural Georgia workforce money. I don't I don't see how the city of Savannah would get any rural workforce money. Uh, they have a port. They uh, a huge tourism. I mean, I don't I don't know what Savannah. What would make anybody think that Savannah is rural? I don't either. And I don't, I mean, there's plenty of other places around the state of Georgia that if you want to do this, that is a lot more rural than Georgia and is really struggling from a housing perspective. Honestly, I didn't know it was the government's job either to build single family homes, but that, that's kind of a topic for another day. I don't like giving out special grants like this. I assume that this real estate developer down there is tied in with government pretty well, lobbied hard for this money. And and uh, I hate to say some shady things are going on, but this seems this seems a little on the shady side. What about the the town that's building a hotel? Yeah, All that that's, stuff. That's below me. Yeah, Thomaston, Georgia. Their city government signed on to build a a, a hotel a couple of weeks ago. I mean, they're signing on the bonds to build a, a hundred uh, you know room hotel. Yeah, I mean, I think the city, I mean, we, we just got this thing where city and county governments, uh, they just don't realize how to stay in their lane. And then the worst thing is you've got even the city of Griffin above me built this beautiful swimming complex that high schools will have swim meets at and, you know, local people will be able to use. But after they spend all this money building it, they don't have money in the budget to actually maintain it. Uh City of Griffin also has a golf course. I mean, when is when is a city supposed to be doing stuff like maintaining golf courses or swimming pools or building hotels or that? You know, it's just a you know we wonder why our property taxes continue going up. It's because cities get over their head on these type projects and then they have to raise taxes on people to support them. Look, I'm I'm pretty hard line with with this is why I'll never be be elected county commissioner. They they put a, a questionnaire out. What what should they do with the area that the county owns around our new reservoir? Sell it. It's, that's what I said. I said this <laughs> outside of the outside of the minimum buffer required by the EPA because it is drinking water. Yes, you should sell it back to the people. It, sell it and and move on. I, I feel the same thing about about the parks. We have beautiful parks in Paulding County. Sell them. <laughs> now and a lot of them are just donated land and all that stuff, but you have to pay to maintain it. Yeah, the maintenance is what costs a lot. Yeah, hundred percent. Sell it. Get rid of it. it. Get rid of the libraries. The yep. entire total of human knowledge now fits in the palm of your hand. <laughs> you know, I, I hear you about libraries. I'm also going to throw the other point of view. There are a lot of young kids that go to libraries to study or to meet up or to, to get on the internet. It, it's a lot different, I think, in rural Georgia than it is 
you know, where you live, where everybody's got high speed internet. Not that I'm advocating for libraries. It's just that. Oh no, there's, there's areas of our County that don't have high speed internet. And there's something that they call the Chevronalds. Yeah. It's a McDonald's Chevron. Yep. Uh, and kids will go and, and get a, get a fountain drink and go to the McDonald's and sit down to use their internet because they don't, they don't have access to the internet, but, but you, but you, they, you have access to the schools. You have a, even even high school. I mean, when the bell rings, not everybody leaves. You, you still have access to to most of the school if you want to go sit in the library and do work or whatever before you leave. Uh, I I'm get just, why I get why the cities and counties do this. I mean, the elected officials they want to look like they're doing something. We talk about this all the time, and you know they'd love to have that brand new pool built. They'd love to you know take their shovel out there and break ground on it, and then when it's finished, they love to cut that ribbon. But, but then after the fact, you've got all these expenses and you don't have the money to maintain it. And that's the trouble with most of this stuff. Yeah, you can't ignore a pool. Oh, no. I, I don't know if you've ever had a pool. I it have. Is, They're very costly. It is constant maintenance. It is. Yep, it is. Going out every day, if not every, if not every other day, check, checking the chemicals. Yep. Uh, ch- uh, cleaning the skimmer. And look, it's not if if it's your pool, it's it's not that big of a deal. It's just 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 part of, becomes part of your your routine to to do that. But when, when you're talking about when you're talking about the county, the county has to hire somebody to do that. And they have to have a pool certificate uh, and all and all that stuff, and they have to maintain chemicals daily because mm-hmm. if, if if it gets out of whack, it becomes a health hazard. Yep, uh, and it has to be heated because I, I I assume it's inside. Oh yeah, so but you, yeah, you're talking it's just about- county. I mean, these governments just need to stay in their lane, do what they're good at doing, which is very little. But roads, bridges, infrastructure, uh, and we don't need to be building pools or hotels or. And the state government doesn't need to be giving my tax dollars to build townhomes in Savannah. I mean, I think if you took that question out to the voters and said, "Do you support Governor Kemp giving your tax dollars to Savannah to build houses?" I think it would be a pretty, you know, I think no would be the answer a large majority of the time. I wouldn't give the mayor of Savannah anything. Yeah, like, why do I want my tax dollars going to build homes in Savannah? And Van is going to be able to stand out front and say, and and hand her to, to to his base and say, look what I'm doing for the people of Savannah. Yeah, and this is a guy that's probably going to run for governor next time around. So, I mean, it's like you're giving money again to people that are not going to vote for you. You're giving it to a liberal city. Uh, and, and again, you just shouldn't be giving $2.5 million out. There's I'm no assuming reason to do that. The, I'm assuming the developer that's going to make the money on this uh, yeah, is we'll somebody. Tra- in, yeah, we'll this, track the, his campaign donations he, down. Cause yeah, that's going to be my guess. I'm is, probably is, pretty certain he's connected. Yeah, uh, you don't get that job by accident. No, you didn't. So, so Johnson gets what he he wants. The developer gets what he wants. Kemp gets to pay somebody back for for support, and they're all you know they're all happy. While the rest of us are going, hey, I had to write a big old ch- check to the Fed and the state last week. Yep, I agree. Ah, damn scumbags. <laughs> Speaking, of Governor Kemp, he signed the bill. "Quote unquote reducing income taxes." Yes, we're gonna have a ton more money in our pocket next year, right? Um, oh, good. Look, I, hey, it's good anytime they reduce the state income tax, so that's good. Uh, this is speeding up plans that were first passed back in 2022 to gradually reduce state income tax from 5.75 to 4.99. The drop this year, though, is going to take it from 5.49 percent in January to. 5.39%. So you're saving 10 basis points. That's how fi- that's how us finance people talk. Uh, but basically on $100,000, you'll save an, an extra $100,000 this year in taxes. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> so you, you and Connie can go out to dinner uh, on your $100 that you say. It'll actually be about, yeah, it'll be a lot more for you. But for us other people of out in the country, it'll be about 100 bucks. <laughs> well... There aren't many restaurants that we go to we can eat on less than 100 bucks. Hey, good for Governor Kemp and the legislature for reducing the state income tax. I just, you know, I've always said when you when you got the Senate, you got the House, and you got the governor all together, 
it's just like school choice where the school choice bill they passed was very, very narrow. Uh, this again is very narrow. I mean, you, you, when you get the opportunity to do this kind of stuff, go big. And, uh, we we could have gone big and reduced it a lot more than we did. Yeah, what's the goal to get down to four point nine nine by? Yeah, I forget uh, what year. It's going to take quite a few years. Uh, yeah, but the goal is to get it right around five percent. And look, they can do it with one bill. We have we have money in the rainy day fund. They I mean, could. We have. Yeah, have, they're trying, have, I mean, they're trying to be prudent with, you know, making sure they don't take too much money out of the budget. But yeah, I mean, the, the budget, we talk about it all the time. The budget's gone from $26 billion in 2019 to $36 billion this year. Uh, it, that's a lot of money that's gone up. And, and, there's no, and there's no excuse for it. Now, look, the, yes, inflation. Uh, if, inflation hits governments just like it hits us. Well, not the federal government because they just continue to keep issuing bonds. Yeah, but it hits state government. Gas, yeah, gas costs more. Products they buy costs more. I, I right. get it, but everybody's suffering from inflation. So, right, but, but you know, in order to in order to compete, you have to pay more. So employee costs go up. Yep. Uh, replacing vehicles. So just take DNR for example. DNR drives some of the oldest vehicles you've ever seen. But when they have to replace a truck that you know five years ago. Pre-COVID, they could have bought for twenty five thousand. That's usually just like an F one fifty single cab, whatever. And now it's it's double that. Mm-hmm. Even on the government purchasing plan. So you think about all the vehicles you see that have tags that say state government on it. All those vehicles have gotten more expensive. Insuring them, well, I think the state probably self insures, but insuring them has gotten more expensive. Yep. So. Everything has gotten 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 more expensive. So yeah, you're going to see some some climb in the budget. But as as incomes come up, numbers only, the value of your dollar hasn't gone up. Right. Uh, the state's collecting more money, and I know that we're all waiting for for the for the, sh- the the other shoe to drop and the and and the economy fall apart and have people out of work. Because that's what Jerome Powell wants: is people out of work. You see uh, receipts go down. But honestly, we should be able to get rid of the income tax completely. Yep. Other other states do it. Tennessee no, does it. I know. I agree. Florida Florida's not really a, a, a fair case study because it's a the tourists pay, pay for Florida. Yep. You know, hotel taxes and, and, and all that stuff. The the tourists really keep Florida Florida afloat. Uh, and and of course, well, tourists also the, the cruise ports and Florida makes a ton of money t- doing that. But Tennessee d- is. I mean, you have Gatlinburg, I guess, and you have uh, University of Tennessee games, and but Tennessee isn't really a even Memphis is not a huge tourist draw like Florida is. So why can why can Tennessee get away with, without without having an income tax and we can't? Yep, it's because no one's motivated to do it. Yeah, that's what it is. And I and I know this was uh, this was what John Burns wanted. He wanted to to, to step into that office and. and be able to tout a uh, income tax uh, cut, and look, all the all the reps get to come back to their districts, and if they have a primary challenger, and say, "I worked, I'm, I worked, and will continue to work to lower the state income taxes until we can eventually eliminate it," and and the crowd will clap, and they'll get reelected. <laughs> Is that how it works? Seems to be, especially especially in in solid red districts. Okay, I'm so confused now going back to our story. So I looked up real quick. I know we got to move on, but Craig Gordon is, it sounds like a a partner in that real estate investment, that real estate firm we talked about earlier, and he's a former state representative. So there we go. Well, we'll definitely have to update. I'll have to do more research on that, but I just searched uh, who owned that company and a former state representative is a partner. So that, that's the, uh, that's the kicker. Was it Stereo <laughs> MCs that did the song Connected? Get Yourself Connected. The writing is on the wall. <laughs> exactly. Oh, goodness. I think that's my closing thought. There we go. It's all connected somehow. I mean, you, can, you just see how government works, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's. <laughs> oh, goodness. I, but, I, but, but, but I called it. Yes, you hundred percent called it. I, I called it, man. There, 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 there ain't no, there ain't no way that the, this guy isn't isn't a, a, a 
in, in the no, crowd. Things, it, it, things just don't happen, right? For, <laughs> there's always a reason. And I, I, and the story is a little confusing. I don't I don't know. We're talking about the previous story, the, the Savannah. I don't know if the two point five million is just for bringing utilities, and the the builder will actually be selling the houses. So it'll be individual owners that they get the houses. They won't be owned by the city. It's the the two point five million is, is for sewer and water and all yeah, that a lot stuff, of it's for the infrastructure. Yeah. yeah, a lot of it's for the infrastructure. Yeah, because so Savannah's that, putting in three point one. State government puts in two five. Savannah puts in three point one to build all this. Which at the end of the day, each home then corresponds to about one hundred ten thousand bucks. I think is what the investment is. Right. I'm guessing being in Savannah, depending on where in Savannah it is, I'm guessing the uh, houses will go for five hundred plus. I don't know. I don't know if it's that or this is low income. I'm not sure. I I don't know. I it, we'll have to look that up later. Low income housing is, is a loser for the builder. Yeah, but I mean, he doesn't care if he gets paid, so we'll see. Well, right, he, he's, pay, he's paid, I'm sorry, it's a loser for investors. I yes. guess that's why that's why government's involved in it, it's, it's yeah, a loser yeah. for investors. Exactly. So yeah, if, if you take 110000 off off the cost of, of building that house, yeah, it, you, you can sell them for, for close to 300000 Yep. And townhouses maybe for 250000 225000 something like that. Townhouses yep. are, are horrible mechanically, speaking you know, by the way. Try to heat and cool ta- uh, a three-story townhouse is a nightmare. Just, they try to do it off of one system. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know if, if anybody knows this. Heat rises. All right, so that's your closing thought. Well, no, I was going to have one more. I was going to say right. that as the show drops, early voting starts in another week. It feels like people are just starting to sort of get fired up about these elections coming up. But, uh, yeah, we've got this congressional race down in uh, CD3, your congressional district three, that is uh, – Full speed ahead. Uh, Brian Jack is Trump's endorsed has been uh, has been endorsed by President Trump. He's bringing Carrie Lake in from Arizona this weekend. I don't know why anybody would bring Carrie Lake in from Arizona to speak on their behalf. And then uh, you've got Mike Crane, who has picked up a lot of momentum down here. Mike's the future or the uh, previous state senator and was the uh, chairman of the third district Republican Party. So. That district is about to get really heated up when these guys start spending money next week. So I'm interested to see what happens here. Well, I am I am a prognosticator. There's a guy named Tim Estes that's running for county chairman uh, in Paulding County. Right. And I and I tell from I, I said he's from the Candace Taylor wing of the party. Oh, sure okay. enough, sure enough. Last week. Candace shows up uh, as the keynote speaker at one of his campaign events. How'd that go? I have no idea. I stayed as far away from it as I could. <laughs> nice. He's, I mean, I don't understand being endorsed by losers. I don't either. This this yeah. is Candace Taylor's person who was- well, Why would anybody cr- want that? Yeah, well, she was crushed in the primary. Crushed. Yep. Absolutely crushed. I mean, and then she said the, the election was stolen from her. She, I'm like, no, honey, you lost by 47 points. Yep. If you lose by 47 votes, okay, we, we, need, we need to really take a look at it. When you lose by 47%, I, like, basically, you were lied to all over the state. People said, oh, I'm voting for you. Yeah, uh-huh. that, but but yeah, I, I don't and I don't understand being endorsed by losers. And I, and I don't mean personally a loser. Other than she was taking advantage of of her her position and taking time off to go campaign, and and continuing to, to make I, I think she makes like one hundred ten thousand down there as a head counselor something in the a county. school system yeah yeah I mean that's insane what she gets paid and and then she's continuing to get paid while she ran around the state running a losing campaign. So on those happy stories of politics. <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to Eric Cumby who takes our audio and turns it into something you can listen to. To Ken Poland, my part of this endeavor, I'm Dave Roberts. We'll talk to you next week. Catch me howling at the moon